So a lot of people use the term Web 2.0. Um, I kind of like the read write web a little bit better because um, it, it kind of captures the shift that's occurred here. It's not uh, a read-only technology that we have with the web now. You know, we've, we've spent the first 10 or 12 years consuming information primarily from it. But what's happened in the last two or three years is that now it's become just a lot easier to write, um, to create content, to publish it, and to publish it really widely. Um, and, and so that is really the, the change here, and, and that is the transformative change, because what happens then is if you're able to create and publish, that means that there's all sorts of potential for connections and for network building and whatever else to go around those, those you know, pieces of, uh, or those pieces of content or those artifacts. So um, as you see more and more people publishing, you see more and more people connecting. And, and uh, as more and more people connect, they find other people with their passions and they find and create kind of these learning spaces online that uh, are, are really becoming foundations for lifelong learning in, in kind of a different context from the way we thought of it in the past. So that's the big shift, the, the read from the read-only to the read-write um, piece of the web or capability of the web. Well, I think that the real important piece of this in order to move kind of even the conversation forward or to, to begin to create real change, systemic change, is for individual teachers and educators to understand it for themselves first. I really believe that there has to be some, some ownership of these potentials. Um, that's not to say that we change everything about what we do, but it's an option. We have to understand that, you know, there, there are these, these opportunities out there. And the only way we get our brains around them in a pedagogy sense is if we own them, so to speak. Um, so what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to provide kind of long-term job embedded professional development, which takes groups of teachers um, from different you know, geographies or, or similar regions and puts them into social network spaces um, and kind of um, you know, immerses them in these communities, in these online learning communities so that they have the support to uh, learn how to function and how to, to um, flourish actually using these tools in a, in a supported environment. But that also then we begin to connect them out of the environment to other teachers around the globe, to other people who share their passions and whatever else. And so, um, you know, instead of kind of the drive-by trainings that, that uh, a lot of professional development is made up of, um, that isn't really, doesn't have a long-term carryover for in, in most instances. What this does is it really helps teachers make it a part of their practice. And, and again, I think that's the most important part. So um, when we have these teams of teachers from different schools, um, and they're all kind of immersing their, themselves into these social technologies and, and learning, I don't know, if new literacies, I, I guess you would call them, around community building and networking and that types of thing that then they, as a team, can build that out, begin to build that out and turnkey that out in sy more systemic ways. And, and what we found and what the research shows is that people who are empowered with the understanding and uses of any type of technology or practice or whatever else, that, that they are more able to carry that conversation and kind of carry that water um, into their districts and into their schools. So that's kind of the model that we've set up. And, and we're finding that the teachers that we're working with right now are, are really surpassing our expectations in terms of their willingness to, to create with these tools, but more importantly to connect with these tools, both locally and globally as well. So I, I think when we're able to publish very easily, that the things that we write then potentially have a much larger audience. And, and it makes the art of publishing or the, art, the craft of writing a little bit more complex because we really have to understand or get our, try to imagine what the reader experiences as they go through our texts that we create. Um, and, and so I, I don't think that there's, I think those basic reading and writing literacies are still extremely important in their basic sense. But what is different now is that, um, and I, I call this, I don't know if it's my term or not, but connective writing and connective reading. That really what we do when we write now is we do it with a purpose to connect those ideas to other people. We do it with the expectation that other people will engage in those ideas. And that's what the power of blogging is. That's what the power of of you know, using wikis in, collaborative sense, in a collaborative space or collaborative senses is that 
um, you know, we really are doing real work. Um, we're, we're really putting our ideas out there with the expectation that there will be a conversation that started around them. And that changes the nature of writing, I think. Um, certainly from simply a technology standpoint, the whole idea of hypertext, the whole idea of reading and, and writing in hypertext environments, I think, requires us to, to think a little bit differently. Um, and there's been a lot of research that's been done that says that there are nuances in the, way we, the ways we read and write in these environments that we have to address when we're teaching our kids. Um, because basically they're, they're learning them on their own right now and they're not really understanding. As, and it's, a lot of adults really aren't understanding the, the changes that happen when they read and write. Um, but it is this idea that everything potentially connects. Um, and it, it's really not simply publishing but then engaging in conversations around the things that we write. And, and that also writing is not simply text any longer. That writing has to be multimedia. That we write in audio, we write in video, we write uh, in live, you know, live in streaming, we're writing. Um, and that there's lots of different kinds of genres almost. Um, I think blogging is just a different genre of writing in, in many cases because of that connection piece of it. But writing is much more expansive and reading is much more complex. Um, it's still based in a lot of the traditional kind of information literacies. We have to know how to vet the texts that we read. We have to know how to decode them, obviously. But uh, when we read now, we really are the editors. You know, much, much more of what we are reading, what our kids are reading, has not been edited in the traditional sense. And so we have to make kids, we have to help kids become active readers, simply not passive consumers of the information um, that's coming their way. And, and, and that's a, a hurdle right now. Um, because we're still kind of in textbook mode, you know, we're still in kind of that, let's hand it to the student, the student reads it, consumes it, believes it, and that's just not the way the world works these days.